Linear accelerator, the patient will be sleeping on the couch, you can see the table, and uh, the radiation will be coming from the initial source, we did a 192 to treat directly into the tumor. Uh, we will be using some applicators to deliver the radioactive source into the radiation oncology. So, obviously, one center uh, generally need one or two radiation oncologists only. Hello all, this is Dr. Dheeraj Masapu and uh, welcome to my channel. So today we have uh, uh, Dr. Pradviraj Masapu, who is a radiation oncologist and so he's going to tell us the scope of radiation oncology. So welcome to my channel, Dr. Pradviraj. Hi bro, it's always a great feeling speaking about radiation oncology in your channel. So you have asked me, people have some, uh, students have some doubts regarding radiation oncology. So uh, I will clarify them and I will hi everyone. I am Dr. Pujuraj Masapu. I am a consultant radiation oncologist practicing in Andhra Pradesh. So the first okay. question would be, so what is the radiation oncology and uh, how is the day uh, going to be like? So radiation oncology is a branch which deals with treating malignant and benign tumors and other benign diseases with ionizing radiation and other forms of radiation. In general, uh, radiation oncology, in considering with the oncology, we have three specialties like medical oncology, surgical oncology, and radiation oncology. On which a patient, each individualized patient will have different types of treatments and different models of approach. So, morning, 9 o'clock, we will be starting with a tumor board discussion regarding the treatment of the patients who were previously worked up. And depending upon the stage, uh, so tumor board will be having like Radiation oncologist, surgical oncologist, medical oncologist, pathologist, and radiologist. We will be discussing the stage and what is the perfect treatment for the patient, and we will write the treatment plan for the individualized patient. So we, there will be no mistake regarding treatment part. So after that, we will go into the OP. We will be starting the new cases, seeing the new case, uh, newly diagnosed cancer cases, and uh, after that, we will be having the follow-up patients who are previously treated with. Uh, radiation and uh, we will be seeing them how is the disease response and everything. So after that we will be after lunch break we will be going to treatment plans. So how exactly we are going to deliver the radiation to the disease will be planned in the system. Okay, this is a treatment planning system will be there. So on an average our regular day will be like this after completion of treatment uh, we will be verifying the treatments uh, given by our staff in the radiation department. So, I will show you the radiation machine in the next step. Like. The second question would be, uh, what are the type of equipments uh, that you are going to use in your practice? Because since it's a new field, many of uh, the students wouldn't have seen actually what radiation oncology is. I'm asking this question. So, you are asking about what are the types of equipments we use. Generally, radiation, in radiation oncology, we use two types of treatments. Teletherapy and brachytherapy. So teletherapy means teletherapy means treating from a distance. As you can see, the radiation machine back here. This is called linear accelerator. So in a linear accelerator, the patient will be sleeping on the couch. You can see the table, and uh, the radiation will be coming from the machine and uh, will be going to the part where the tumor is exactly. So this is called teletherapy. We are not be touching the patient. The treatment is radiation is very far from the patient, but we will be treating with excess. So this is called teletherapy. And second one is brachytherapy. So I'm going to show the machine brachytherapy machine. Let's go. Uh, so after teletherapy, I have told you about brachytherapy. So brachytherapy machine. This is brachytherapy machine, which will be using radioactive source in a 192 to treat directly into the tumor. Uh, we will be using some applicators to deliver the radioactive source into the tumor. You can see here for each and every patient there will be a separate mode for abdominal cases, for head and neck cases, you can see brain tumor cases. We will be developing a mode for each and every patient so that uh, we can precisely treat the area where we want to deliver the radiation and the patient will not be having the freedom to move during treatment of radiation. This is called immobilization. And this is another type of immobilization called backlog. So using all these uh, immobilization devices, we will be treating patients precisely where we want to deliver the radiation and curing them with the better results. Apart from these machines, uh, these machines use X-rays. Uh, now, futurists, uh, we are going to study regarding proton therapy treatments. 
which are in phase two trials right now. In India, there we are going to establish in India like uh, six centers, and uh, each proton therapy machine costs around like 200 to 250 crores of rupees. And uh, if the results are good with proton therapy, those equipments will be. We are going to see treatments with those treatments. And the third question is, uh, so what are the job opportunities in India uh, after finishing your MD in radiation oncology? And what are the base uh, base skills when somebody tries to uh, get a job? You are asking about job opportunities and uh, base pay scale. Okay, so right now in India, uh, there is a little bit of demand for radiation oncologists right now. But uh, uh, alarming factor is that the radiation oncology seats have been very much drastically increased in recent times. So there will be a lot of competition in the near future. So if a radiation oncologist comes after 5 years from now, uh, is going to be like a registrar, should work like a registrar. Right now the registrars uh, which are, who are working in metropolitan cities are getting pay scale like 70 to 80,000. So they should work like uh, 2 years as a registrar and uh, 3 years as junior consultant to become a senior consultant. So it's, it takes a 5 years of uh, time to develop your own clientele and you to become a senior consultant. Uh, as everybody knows, OPD branch has a threat of competition and once competition develops, it's all about how you market your skills. If you doesn't have skills, you doesn't develop any type of uh, skills, that's a different game. You do not survive in this uh, uh, competition. But if you develop skills and you can able to market very good how proper your what are your results, how proper you are treating patients, uh, then uh, you can survive, you can get a very good opportunity in marketing. You go to a uh, higher level if you have the uh, skill of marketing. So, uh, regarding the pay scale, uh, a registrar will get around as a previously said that 70 to 80,000 in metropolitans and one lakh uh, in the type 2 cities. And after becoming a junior consultant, you will be paid around like 1.3 to 1.5 lakhs. And, uh, when you become a senior consultant, the pay scale varies for each and individual. So on an average base is that you will be getting like 2 lakhs, 1.8 to 2 lakhs if you become a 5 years of senior. But that can be drastically improved if you have the skill of marketing your uh, uh, treatment results to better clientele. So it will be going around like you can earn up to 3 to 4 lakhs per month if you have very good clientele. So this is the regarding base pay scale and uh, what are the and uh, the next question would be uh, see what are the future uh, prospects and uh, how is it going to be ten years down the line and uh, how is uh, the uh, number of hospitals providing jobs and number of people coming out how is that ratio being maintained. So these are some other questions we have. And uh, what are the future opportunities of radiation oncologists? In India, there is one. Remember one thing: there is going to be a lot of competition, a lot of uh, uh, strict dogfight route. So getting cases and treating them under your name and uh, proving that you are the most worthy person for uh, uh, treating with a radiation machine to other doctors and to the public. This competition is going to uh, increase day by day. But Remember one thing, but you will enjoy the radiation oncology branch while practicing in such a way that you, some of the cancers which are uncurable, which are very large size, which are not amenable for surgery, which are not correct for chemotherapy, you will be uh, curing them with your radiation and you will enjoy those uh, results when you start practicing radiation oncology. And, uh, and uh, on an ideal, uh, one radiation oncology should have leadership qualities because uh, there are going to be uh, five to six technologists under you, a lot of sisters under you, brachytherapy sisters, and uh, physicists will be under you. You should have the leadership qualities in running the department. On an average, every hospital radiation oncologist should uh, maintain nearly 15 to 20 persons under him and should maintain the department hormone and all those things. So if you have the leadership qualities, if you have the skill of marketing yourself in the future, if you have the ability to learn and improvise and adapt to the new techniques, then radiation oncology is the best field that you can enter right now. But remember one thing, there's a lot of competition. Each and every individual who is practicing 
radiation oncology will be your competition. Coming to the number of hospitals and uh, number of job opportunities, the, definitely there is an increase in the number of hospitals. But comparing to the pass out ratio to the number of hospitals, the pass out, pass out ratio is very high. So number of hospitals being uh, started are less compared to the number of people who are passing out from radiation oncology. So obviously one center uh, generally need one or two radiation oncologists only. But in that area, there may be 10 people passing out from the radiation oncology department for a job opportunities. But uh, only two people will be hired as a senior consultants. Rest of the people should go like one or two registers. And uh, there will be like one junior consultant uh, in metropolitan I am saying about. In type 2 cities, there will be no system of re register system is not there. And there will be no junior consultant. Only the senior consultants will be in position of the holding the radiation oncology posts. So they will be like me, we, are, we will be doing the work of register, uh, writing the case sheet to treating the patient and counseling the patient and publicizing ourselves. It's like a multi uh, work approach for us in uh, type 2 cities. But type 1 cities, there is a clear separation of the work, uh, what register should do, what uh, uh, junior consultant should do and what senior consultant should do. For uh, Even though number of hospitals may increase, the job, job opportunities will be less compared to the number of hospitals. Yeah, that's it bro. And uh, signing off, your brother Dr. Prithviraj Masipu. Bye-bye.